Don't forget to check out the website, guys. It's updated weekly with new blog posts. Also over there, you can check out my merch as well, which is now available for sale. And there's also a handy guide if you are new to reselling. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to his charity shop haul. So in today's video, I've got hats and ceramics to share with you. So if you don't like hats and you don't like ceramics, unfortunately this video probably isn't for you. However, you might want to stick around because you might learn something, you never know. Sometimes some people get something out of my rambling, so that's uh, a positive, I suppose. But if you don't like those two things and you really, you know, are not interested in them, then maybe it isn't for you and maybe just click off this video now. But for those of you who are interested, then stick with me. I will share with you a few of the items I picked up. Some good value here, some nice items, and uh, yeah, just gen genuinely uh, quite a nice trip out. And I got some uh, interesting items, really interesting bits. So we will uh, start off with the first item. So first off, we've got this, I think it's wool, 100% uh, wool, ha hand-woven Harris tweed, uh, Dunn & Co. You can see in there, you know how much I've talked about Dunn & Co. Well, I don't know if you can see in there very well, but because it's uh, kind of faded off a little bit. But this is a Dun Dunn & Co hat, you know how much I've talked about Dun & Co and Lock & Co and all the rest of it for hats. So I love when I find them. Uh, they're not necessarily incredibly valuable or anything second hand but they're just quite you know quite nice hats good quality hats um so yeah dun and co uh, made in made in britain this hat is a 56 so it's like small bordering on extra small really it doesn't fit me so you know with hats really you do want to get that medium to large range that most people fit into you know medium large maybe even extra large um so you know small extra small isn't going to be as desirable um you know it'll obviously still sell it might take a little bit longer to sell now i paid two pound fifty for this hat here which i was more than happy to pay because i'm thinking i'll get about 15 to 20 for this hat being that it's obviously a small or in that range it might be more close to the 15 if it was a little bit bigger size, I might be able to push close to that 20 and then it would sell a bit quicker because obviously more people are looking out for those slightly larger sizes. Um, but, you know, yeah, still pretty happy with that hat. I couldn't say no to picking it up because when it's a nice vintage hat like that, solid, uh, nice hat, um, I can't say no, you know, really. Um, and I, I don't particularly like, like, I'm not a big fan of the look of these hats, but I can appreciate the quality and, uh, you know, that's kind of why I like picking them up and, and why I like always sort of seeing them in the chat shop so yeah that's that one there so guys i forgot to show you a couple of hats i don't even know how that happened so what i'm going to try and do is drop this segment somewhere in the whole video hopefully um if i can find a nice little opening to drop it in um but yeah so i got a couple of these uh 5950 new era i think these are snapbacks opposed to baseball caps um but these are as you can see new era and then 5950 you can see in here um yeah just little uh sort of snapback hats seven uh, th these are the philadelphia 76ers i don't really know anything about sports so i'm guessing these will be like baseball but i'm not 100 percent sure on that um but yeah they've got these really nice uh, little uh sort of patches sewn in and stuff here we've got uh their sixes on this side here um and they're just pretty nice i've also got another one here don't know whether i said i got these um for a pound each uh well, you can probably see that pound each from an age UK pound shop. So I was really, really happy with that. This one is my favorite. This is the Boston Red Sox. Um, this one's like my favorite out of the two. Uh, Red Sox there. We've got Boston. We've got another Red Sox there. And then we've got a really nice patch on this side. Boston Red Sox there. So really, really nice. As I say, paid a pound each, so two pound all in. I've not been able to find these exact ones on completing and sold. Generally, a lot of these go for around the twenty pound. I'm thinking of maybe going a little bit higher, maybe twenty five pound for these, because as I say, I've not been able to find these uh, specific ones on completing and sold or listed. So you know, if I'm the only person going to have some of these listed, I may as well go a little bit higher. Um, but you never know. I might end up having to come down a little bit um, if I'm waiting quite a while for these to go anyway. 
but even you know one pound into 20 quid I'm more than happy with that so even if I can't get the 25 quid hopefully I should get the 20 quid on these because a lot of these do go for around that 15 or 20 quid so yeah pretty happy with those this one does need a little bit of a clean up there's some marks here and stuff I don't know quite where but around here there's some marks so might need a bit of a clean up but that's fine I should be able to do that and hopefully it should be looking pretty good so with that being said I'll leave those there and uh, I suppose you will be getting on with the whole video or maybe I'll put this at the end I don't know but yeah, um, I will see you in the next one anyway guys So next, this was actually in the same charity shop Again for £2.50 These weren't actually stickered up at £2.50 um, So I just had to ask a price And I was... I was like crossing my fingers saying please don't say something ridiculous like six quid each or something just please give me a half decent price but yeah uh, the lady came back and said £2.50 each and I said yes I'll take those for £2.50 so yeah pretty happy with this one this one is a brand I've never seen before it is don't know whether you're gonna catch it in there with the light I'm not sure but uh, it is a exclusive tweed mill headwear uh, British made hat it's not a nice color this one like a, a nice browny color with these little flecks of orange or, or these kind of little runs of orange going through it really really nice um, you know I'd say this isn't necessarily my style of hat so that's pretty good actually that these aren't really my style of hats because then I'm not tempted to keep them um, but yeah you know I can still appreciate them it says here Drop Brin Hat, Bird's Eye, Medium. What what does that mean? Don't know if you can see it on there. Drop Brin Hat, me, uh, Bird's Eye, Medium. It's got an M for medium. So this hat's a medium, that's good, because I can put, obviously put that in my title, because sometimes, sometimes with certain vintage hats, they don't have a size on there, and then you're like, oh, well, how do I know, where, you know what size this is? You can kind of make an assumption, and then you can put that in your listing and say, you know, I'm guessing that this is X. Uh, X size. I mean, you can measure them, but sometimes it doesn't give a complete accurate, accurate representation of the size. So, you know, it, sometimes it can be a bit hard with hats if I've not got a size on, but I'm glad that I found the size on that one anyway. So, 250 that one again. I'm thinking probably 15 quid, something like that. Maybe a bit more. Uh, maybe I could push again close to 20, but I'm thinking 15 quid on that one. Again, a very good quality hat. Uh, you can just feel the quality in these hats. You, you, you can feel that um, kind of sense of uh, this has been made with quality. So, uh, you know, they're quite easy to identify these hats in, in charity shops when you see them. So, yeah, that's that one there anyway. So, a little break from hats, and I will show you this one now. This one, I'm not sure whether it's going to be a fail or not. So, basically, I was at the counter paying for those hats, actually, um, or, or just in the process of paying, and my mum, uh, basically, what she does is she scouts the uh, bushka brack. If she's in the charity shops with me, she'll scout the bushka brack, um, and sometimes she'll end up, uh, you know, spotting things, because she's quite good with the studio pottery and the... Um, just, yeah, just generally like the studio pottery and stuff. She, she kind of has a good eye for uh, looking out for these little local potters or looking out for different studio potters that might be valuable. So, or, or you know, at least like, you know, 20 to 40 pound kind of range. So, um, this is a really nice piece actually here. I don't know whether it's been hand painted or not. Certainly been glazed. It probably has been hand painted actually. Um, but it's really nice piece, you know, it's intricately done. It's by um, Celtic Pottery. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, I completely lost my uh, train of thought there. I don't know what I was doing, but um, I was paying at the counter, and my mum handed me over this. She saw it on the on the shelf. Um, now, because I was already paying, I was like, "Right, well, I'll do a quick look over it, and I'll do uh, and and I looked at the name Celtic Pottery. I think, yeah, yeah, you know, that's pretty decent. And I whacked it on. Well, I didn't whack it. <laughs> that would be terrible. It would have smashed. But I gently placed it down on the counter and said, uh, "Could I have this one as well, please?" And it was three pounds. And um, Obviously, in my haste, of because I was paying and all the rest of it, and I was wanting to look over and just put it on the on the table, I obviously didn't see this little chip. Now, I suppose on first glance, it might not be too noticeable. Obviously, at that angle, you can see it quite well, um, which is this little chip on here. Now, it is quite good that it's probably on the best uh, place you can possibly get a chip on pottery, which is this bottom rim here. Um, so, I'm not too sure whether this is going to be a fail or not. Now, I paid £3 for it. There is um, some Celtic... What was this again? Celtic... 
pottery. There's some Celtic pottery on, like a, a bowl or something, for like 55 quid. Um, now, I don't think this piece is worth 55 quid. I would have thought, I would have imagined about 30 to 40, something like that. And then obviously if I needed to come down, I'd come down. But because of that little chip, I'm not sure how much that's going to harm it. I'm not sure maybe I need to slash the price in half, uh, maybe go at 20 quid, or whether it's even listing at, uh, worth listing at all. It's always hard to determine whether someone's when whether someone's going to actually come along, even with that chip, and 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 appreciate the piece and, and end up buying it. Um, so it's kind of hard when you've got you know a, a kind of semi okay piece like this, but with a chip. Now it's not as hard when you've got let's say. Um, either a really, really like poor piece, like it's not valuable at all, like it's only £10 and it's got a chip, just don't even bother listing it. Um, and it's sometimes not e not as hard when you've got a more expensive piece with a chip because you know it's going to be worth listing. If it's a £150 item and it's got a small little chip on it, it's still going to be worth something. It's still going to be worth listing for at least some money. But when you've got something of kind of mid-value range like this, it's hard to determine whether it's going to be worth your while listing it and what price you should put it at and how much you should take off the original price you were thinking of putting at. So I'm not sure with this one at the moment. I might try and list it for 20 quid and see if anyone bites on it. That seems like a good way to go. Um, if, as I say, if it had been, if it didn't have the chip, I might go, you know, as high as 40 quid on this and just wait and see if anyone uh, bites on it because a few of the different pieces I've seen on seem to be of half decent value. And I do, I can see the quality in this piece. It's a nice piece. It's got its lovely... I don't know, it's got this lovely colour to it, to be honest, and I really do like these low-style bowls. I know there's probably a, a term for these low-style bowls. I did have a little graphic, actually, of all the names of different bowls and jugs and stuff, because there's loads of different names of different styles of bowls and jugs. Um, so there will be a, a specific term for this style of kind of low bowl like this, um, but I do really love these kind of, this style. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure on that one. Bit Maybe a bit of a fail, but I might still get some good profit out of it, so we don't know. But, yeah, nice item, that one, anyway. I've probably rambled for about four minutes on that, so I do apologise. We'll get on with the next one now. So, last hat is this uh, light felt. Um, it's a crushable hat, actually, this one. So, I'm assuming that, you know, I'm not going to do it now, but if I just, like, press down on this, it'd crush up, and then you could obviously put it back up again. So, that's pretty cool. It's made in the USA. It's got this nice little toggle on here. I think this little toggle, because I didn't know for ages, but I think this little toggle is for, basically, you have a little thing on here as well. Like, you have this little thing that you can push back and forth. I think that's for, like, basically, you know, well, let me put it on and demonstrate, actually. So, you put it on, and then you do this with this. And I never knew this, but I think you do that like that, and then it keeps it on your head. Like, for example, if it's, like, a windy day or whatever, um, then it'll keep it on your head. I think that's what it's for, anyway. But I didn't know that for a very long time. Um, but, yeah, so it's quite a nice hat, this one. Got a lovely little uh, design around the rim, very much in the same style, or very similar style, I think it might actually be the same style as that Larry Maham one, I think I showed that on a video, I've done so many videos recently, I don't know, I don't know what, what I've shown, what I haven't shown, but I think I showed that Larry Maham one in a video, I have actually since sold that for 34 99 and I paid £3 for that one, um, this one again is going to be a similar sort of price, 30 to £35, something like that, um, and I did pay up on this one, I paid 8 quid for it, but I just couldn't not pay that, you know, I thought, I don't want to leave it, I like the look of this hat, it's a nice hat, um, and yes, I would have liked to get it for more of that 3 to £5 range, like obviously I got that line in my hand one for 3 quid. I'd like to get these for more 3 to £5, but you know, I just couldn't leave it even though it was 8 quid. but yeah, so hopefully some good value in that one, quite a nice looking hat, I'm sure you will agree. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I did, it's made in the USA, so that's something I look out for now because uh, a lot of these hats... Um, that are made in the USA and that are decent quality and that are from a decent brand uh, do seem to do quite well. So that's obviously one of the kind of maybe the key points to look out for. It, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that every hat from the USA is going to be worth money or anything, but it's something, it's just one of those little key points or key factors that you can be looking at or drawing from uh, when you can kind of assess whether a hat is quality or not or whether, you, whether a hat is um, you know, going to be worth some money or whatever. It's just one of those many different key factors you, you can look at. But yeah, nice hat that one, and uh, I will leave it there for that one.
So finally a couple of bits of ceramic. So this one's really nice. It's like a little trinket dish. I suppose people could also put the keys and stuff in this, but I always get worried like, you know when people put the keys in something like this, I always get worried that the design's gonna, you know, get messed up and stuff. So I personally wouldn't be putting my keys in it, but you know, I suppose someone probably would. It's kind of got that kind of the same size as something like that. Um, but yeah, but yeah, this is quite nice actually. This is David Eels or yeah, is it Eels? David Eels. I think it's, what is it, Shepherd's Well Pottery. So you can pause the video now if you want to just have a quick read of what that says. Um, but yeah, really nice looking design on this one. Very simplistic, but also just nice, you know. And it's also got quite a, a rustic design in here with this kind of etched in. Obviously, they've etched into the clay. It's quite nice. Uh, you know, it's rustic, but it, but again, it's quite nice. Um, and yeah, I paid 149 for this, and I'm thinking of going 20 quid on that. Might seem a little bit high, um, because some of these uh, pieces, you know, generally only go for between 13 and 15 quid. But you know, I like it. I rate this piece a little bit more than the stand, more standard ones of these. Um, so I'm thinking maybe 20, maybe even push a little bit higher than that. Uh, just because I do, I, I do like this, you know, I think it's quite a nice looking, looking piece, but yeah, that's that one there anyway, a uh, nice little sort of trinket bowl, uh, a slight, maybe a slightly, a little bit bigger than a trinket bowl, but yeah, still nice on that one. And then finally, we've got this really, really nice glazed bowl. Um, I really like this one. I really like this one. So, I don't know how well you're going to pick it up in the light there, but we've got this really nice green. Um, obviously, it's a glazed bowl here. Uh, and then if I turn it up this way, uh, we've got some really nice designs going on there. Uh, we, it just, I don't know. It's kind of um, bold yet subtle if that even makes sense like it's kind of quite a bold design but the colors aren't actually that bold like they're not like really neon or anything so it's kind of like bold and subtle at the same time but i really do rate this um now i don't know the value of this uh you can see there is a name on there it's anyone's guess how much this would be worth and uh, you know obviously like um, someone who knows the name will be able to think, oh, right, yeah, that's that's X value. I don't know the name. I can't, um, I can't see particularly what the name says. When I find out what the name says, I would be able to um, actually attribute a value to it because I can do better research into it. But even just for what it is, without a name or anything, I'd be whacking this up for 40 or 50 quid because it's nice. It's nice. With the name, it could be more than that, to be honest. So, yeah, really excited about this piece. Uh, oh, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that there. That, not there. About there. That kind of, like, lights up a little bit in the light. Oh, no, it, it already is kind of like that. But that's really cool there, that little little, little design there. Um, so, yeah, I really, really do like this piece. Um, again, it's got that lovely kind of low style that I was saying I liked uh, a minute ago. So it's kind of just got everything I like in this piece. Um, so I'm going to have to maybe ask around a few people who are a little bit better at this sort of stuff than me. You know, I just make this up as I go along. You know, I'm not... I know some people have said like, um, oh, ask ads about antiques or collectibles or whatever. Let me get this clear. I don't know anything. I just like literally hop from one mistake to the other and or, or maybe just one thing to the other and then just hope I'm doing right and then learn along the way that's all I'm doing by the way here I'm not a, an expert or anything um and I don't think even even when I'm like 50 or something and I've got more knowledge I don't think I'd call myself an expert anyway because I'd be scared that if I did call myself an expert and then I got something wrong then I'd, everyone would call everyone would call me out for it anyway so then I'd be back in this mode of not being an expert anyway so with literally no point in me ever calling myself an expert but yeah so really nice on this one definitely going to be going 40 or 50 quid even without the name but if the name's something really really special sky's the limit could be really really good money I'm, i would just be guessing so um yeah really really happy on that one nice item and that finishes it off so i will leave it there for this whole video guys i hope you enjoyed it i know there's a lot of rambling and messing about from here there and everywhere or whatever just a random i know i'll say what mel says actually it was a random stream of consciousness that i think that's what she says 
So yeah, I'll say that because that actually sums it up perfectly for this video. I've just kind of gone from one thing to the next. Um, but yeah, so I will leave it there for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, then I would appreciate a like down below. If you have any comments, questions, or queries about any of the items you've seen here today, then drop me a comment down below. And if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'll put a little graphic up there. Um, and yeah, um, I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys. Thank you.